What's going on everybody? This is Chris and I've got a new sneak peek first look at the Miami Knights 2.0 uniforms that were released this week. The Miami Hurricanes will wear these uniforms during the 2020 season. Go ahead and hit the like button if you guys like these uniforms and if you like seeing them in this video. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this simulations and matchups against other teams and also any information on the Miami Hurricanes. So this one, uh, just a sneak peek, only the first quarter. This one's against Oklahoma. Miami and Oklahoma are not scheduled to face each other this year, but it's two programs with a lot of history, and I thought it'd also be a good look at a, a premier program as well as Miami. So here we go. So Oklahoma's off to kick off. Jalen Knighton set to return. I think many of you are excited that Jalen's going to be the team's kick returner, so I want to make sure I put him in here as well. Way it's going for Miami. Miami's five and one at the midway point. I think many people are excited in the sense that there's a lot of positives. Starting with the Eric King right here, quarterback. And there's certainly things to work on, but certainly a lot of positives as well. And I am very curious to see how the second half of the season goes with the offense, with the Eric, with the defense. The freshmen. There's a lot of intriguing topics with this team. We can certainly get to those. Drop in the comments. Let me know what you think, how the things are going, how things have gone in the first half of the season. Looking at the offensive line. In the offensive line, the starting unit has certainly changed it up quite a bit. Every now and again, or every game, it feels like there's a new starter. They kind of go back and forth. Zion Nelson has made starts at left and right tackle. Jared Williams has been out with an injury. John Campbell a little slowed. So... Pretty much the same guys, but the, the starting group has changed a little bit. And I think if you're looking at the offensive line, again, it's kind of like with the team. You see some positives there, but also some things that certainly need to be worked on for this second half of the year, which is a lot of a lot of big time games coming up for sure. So that's tough there. That's a nice throw. He's open. Mike Carley unable to stay in bounds. Shout out to Mike Carley. He had a huge game last week. A career game. 10 catches, 170 yards. I think it was great. There was a lot of attention on the wide receivers for not producing. So when a guy does produce, especially at the level that Mike put up, the 170 there, 10 catches, career highs on both marks. Definitely deserves a lot of recognitions for that and was named ACC Receiver of the Week. And I think what stood out to me during that performance was, you know, there were some open throws in there, but I thought Mike did a good job of really getting an open downfield and sometimes making a, some tougher catches where, particularly with altering his body a little bit, making adjustments with the ball in the air and coming down with it. I think... I think it was a great sign, and Mike said after the game that he really felt like he had to step up and uh, really felt like, you know, it, it was on him as the oldest guy among the receiver group. So good to see from, from Mike. I'm surprised he's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start, but maybe this will jump start him. And speaking of slow starts, Oklahoma's obviously off to that slow start. Very uncharacteristic of them. They've had very good... A number of very good seasons in a row. So Oklahoma's starting to work in a battle, battling themselves back into the mix. Spencer Rattler's their quarterback, new quarterback this year for Oklahoma, but certainly a lot of talent in Spencer. And you see the running game in TJ. And shout out to Sooner Nation, everybody. If anybody's an Oklahoma fan out there, shout out to you. Checking out this video. So here we go. Yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think of these uniforms. I really like them. I thought they did a good job. I, I think the lines on the shoulders look good. And the pants, and obviously with the black jersey, black pants, black helmets. And one of the things they talk about with these Miami Knights uniforms, and they wore them before, just different alterations, but they say it's inspired the Miami, inspired by the Miami nightlife. And I know a lot of teams like to use black uniforms, but I think they really look really good when Miami implements them. 
with the orange and the green and, and sometimes they mix in the white. You don't see as much of that in this one. But I definitely wanted to show you guys what it might look like, what it's going to look like when these guys step foot on the field wearing these uniforms. There's 81 Jared Harrison Hunt. I gave him a start in this one just because there's I know there's a lot of attention on him. A lot of you guys are excited about what Jared has been able to do at defensive tackle, redshirt freshman. Didn't play much at all last year, but you're seeing a lot of athleticism, a lot of playmaking ability, and it feels like he's just getting started with his career in the sense that he's really flashing. And it feels like there's a lot of upside with him. I think many of you would even like to see him play even more. But I think they've done a good job of really establishing a role, a role for Jared. It's been well documented. He's a former uh, basketball player, good background there, and just continues to to do well making that transition and getting another year of experience playing football. You know, one thing that Jared's talked about also is too that is that the basketball side of it really helps not just with his hands but his footwork as well, and it kind of both skill sets from the basketball standpoint have really helped him. Okay, looking at Miami's offense, Cameron Harris obviously a lot in the to talk about with Cameron Harris hasn't had the productive games the last three games. He voiced some displeasure after that third one. Asked Coach Rhett Lashley about that. And he gave a good response about it, and, and we'll see how things are going to move forward. You can check out other videos. You can check out the video on this channel or any VIP subscriber to InsideTheU.com. There's an article on the whole situation, including what Cam said, and, and also breaks down statistics and other things with that. And always plenty of information on InsideTheU.com with the team, with recruiting. If you guys are looking for more coverage, you can always check out a VIP, VIP subscription there. I always appreciate all the support there. And I always appreciate all the support from you guys here on the channel, watching these videos and these simulations, taking a look at the team. Again, these sneak peeks. I've also done full game simulations. I think you guys have enjoyed that. So Dierk off to a slow start. Nothing like that last simulation. He completed his first 10 passes. I thought it was funny. He completed his first 10, 10 passes against Virginia in the simulation. And then he goes out against Virginia and completes his first nine passes. So certainly a nice trend there. But if you're looking at this, hopefully he doesn't get off to an 0-3 start his next game. But... I think with Derek, you know, I, I've said it quite often. I think that there's more to come with him. I think he's still getting into the mix. I don't think this is the best that he'll be. I, I know these six games in, I just feel confident that you're going to see really big performances of him. And I do understand that, you know, you're sitting right now at five games left in the regular season, all ACC games. So you definitely want to see that happen sooner than later because you don't want to run out of time in a season like this. So, that's a huge play there. So Miami's in business, down to the 14, inside the red zone. They've been very good on the season in the red zone. Not just scoring points practically every time, but I think they've done a good job of getting touchdowns in the red zone, not just field goals. First and ten, a big mistake, especially when you factor So down to the 14 here. A lot of options. I think Brevin Jordan, I've got him in here. I think Brevin will be back for the NC State game when Miami comes off the bye. Dealing with the shoulder injury, missed the last two games. I think with what you've seen at the wide receiver position last game, Mark Pope had a good game. The Wiggins still looking to have one of those big games, but you know, you mix that in, and if you can see the flashes from the running game and really mix that in, and then you get Brevin Jordan and Will Mallory at tight end and really put this thing all together. And the big games in the second half are games against Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Those will be pivotal for Miami's season. 
take this one down near the 15. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. I think, too, with Cameron Harris. And, and the coaches haven't mentioned anything about injuries, but he did, was banged up a little bit the first two games. And either way you look at it, he's got a bye week this week. And if he was ailing, you got to figure he'll be close to full strength there in that next game. So D. Wiggins, that's a huge catch. Really impressive touchdown by D. Wiggins. You gotta hope that's a sign of things to come, because like I said, he's a guy that is looking for one of those big games. Nice one and a catch there. That's a good touchdown there. Guys are celebrating with him. So nice play there, and that's what you want to see, obviously. Borgales. Has had a good start to the season for sure. I think also if you're looking at some other guys that have done really well to start the season, I don't think there's any questions. Safety Bubba Bolden's been great. Played really well. I asked Blake Baker about him, and I'll have an article on the site about it, but he talked about how he thinks that he can still be get even better, and I think that says a lot about his ability. And I'm not surprised he would say that because I think Bubba's been very good, but certainly it's not a surprise to think he could be even more productive. Other guys I'll be looking forward to the second half. I, I really want to, you know, the defensive ends. You know, Quincy Roche, Jalen Phillips have been good. I think they still have potential to, to be even better than they've been so far, too. And we're wrapping this up again. Just one quarter of action in these sneak peeks, these first looks. Hopefully you guys like the uniforms. If you guys are still here, shout out to you guys for getting through this whole video here. But just real quick, I haven't talked too much about the Virginia game, but I, I know a lot of disappointment. I thought it was going to be a big win by Miami. I thought the offense was going to be able to get it going and certainly disappointing that they were unable to and you come away with a five-point win. And yes, there, it goes both ways. A win is a win, so you can take that side of it. Certainly there's things to be worked on. It's not what they would have liked in terms of the points. I, I do think the yards were there, so that's a good sign. There were some good things in the passing game. Dierk was efficient, so there were some positives. It was almost a little surprising when you look at the yards that the points weren't a little higher. And certainly you would have liked a, a bigger game, and we'll see if it's going to be a sign, sign of things to come. I think that's what a lot of people are a little concerned with because you had one of these games against Pittsburgh the week before, but maybe it's just one of those things where they had two of these in a row. They can hit the reset button during the bye week and come out with these next five games and really get on a roll. I think NC State would be a good test. When NC State's had a good start to their season, even though their quarterback went down. But I'm, I, I say this, but I'm also aware of certainly you're worried about trends developing when you're starting to talk about multiple games when things aren't quite working the way you thought they might. But in this one, Miami gets that 7-0 lead here. Just one quarter of action. Shout out once again to everybody that checked these things out. Once again, hit the like button if you guys like these uniforms. If you like this sneak peek, I'm always interested in doing more. But thanks again for watching. Thank you for subscribing. For more information on the Miami Hurricanes, check out InsideTheU.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. Thanks again and take care.